Okay, so today's video shouldn't be long. If you have about five to seven minutes, I encourage you to stay till the end for my input. As always, keep in mind, this is gonna be simply my opinion. Everything that we're gonna be talking about is subjective, so not really grounded in facts. No spreadsheets, no benchmarks, just an open discussion. So without further ado, welcome to the channel. My name is Mello. And today we are going to be talking about the three potential reasons why I believe most YouTubers are actually wrong when they're talking about the Mac Studios, primarily the M1 Max and the M1 Ultra. Okay, and the first issue I'm gonna have with a lot of these videos is that when it comes to a lot of these big tech YouTubers, they're downplaying the hardware of the M1 Ultra and the M1 Max. And when it comes to their conclusions, they're approaching a lot of their audience with a one size fits all. What do I mean by this? Well, the M1 Ultra and M1 Max are very capable computers. There's a big audience like myself that has yet to get hands on with the Apple silicone chips. To simply state in your videos or these reviews that are coming out that the M1 Ultra and M1 Max chips are bad or that you simply cannot recommend them does a big disservice to your audience because you have to realize that everyone comes from a different background. We all work with different budgets, and more importantly, we all have different needs. Some people will take advantage of what the M1 Max and M1 Ultra can utilize. Some people don't even need to have that hardware. So a lot of these YouTubers are concluding with the idea that you can fall back to the MacBook Pro, whether it's the 14 inch or 16 inch with the M1 Pro processor and be pretty content with that. Let's say, for example, the end user is someone like myself that does video editing, photo editing, and they want a unit that has 32 gigabytes of RAM. Up until recently, you can only get that in two ways. You go with the M1 Max and the MacBook Pro 16 inch that retails at about $34.99, or you fall back to those MacBook Pros that are the 14 inch or 16 inch that have 16 gigabytes of RAM and do the 32 gigabyte RAM upgrade, which adds another $400 to that price tag. When the Mac Studios were announced, the M1 Max has a starting price of $19.99. Alongside that, pre-installed, you have the 32 gigabytes of RAM and you get the better M1 Max processor at a lower starting price but you want to recommend the MacBook Pro 16 inch or 14 inch. You see where I'm kind of getting with that? That's a little bit of crazy talk right there. <laughs> now, issue number two that I have with some of these videos is in regards to benchmarks and software. And what I mean by this is that when a lot of these YouTubers are running the performances for some of these processors, they're heavily relying on benchmarks and benchmarks barely scratch the surface, if anything, when it comes to the performance of the chips. They do give us a starting point, but it is not the end game by any means. I would love to see a lot more real world tests, whether it's stacking 8K footage, adding different effects, different color grades to really stress the processor. There have been, and I'll give kudos to them, there have been a few YouTubers have, who have done those type of tests, so I'm gonna put them in the description along with their video so you can kind of get an, an idea of what I'm referring to. In regards to the software side, a lot of these stress tests or benchmarks are being performed on software that has yet to be updated or utilized to take advantage of the full capabilities of the M1 Max or M1 Ultra chipset. So as of right now, we can't really get a true hands-on experience, especially since the processors have been out for about less than a week, and I'll, I'll be getting to that point very shortly. 
But another thing to factor is that when these tests are being done, they're being done with the mindset that you're a YouTuber. Keep in mind that not everyone is a YouTuber. I would say that when it comes to their kind of workflow, you know, they're recording potentially talking head videos like this one, doing B-roll, putting it together, and they're done. Put this technology in the hands of a professional per se, and I promise you that they would utilize the hardware to its fullest potential. So just some ideas floating around in regards to benchmarks and the software. Now the third issue I'm gonna have with a lot of these videos that are coming out is in regards to the length of the ownership of the Mac Studios. Some of these YouTubers have had the hardware for less than two, three days, and they're using that as some type of certification to say, hey, I know everything, the ins and outs of the Mac Studios. And to me, again, another disservice, if you're going to be doing a review, I know it's gonna sound far-fetched, but you should have that hardware for at least a couple weeks. This in itself is another problem due to everyone's trying to just output their video as quick as possible. So I can see how that can have some conflicting ideas there. But I would love to see YouTubers not be in such an immediate rush to put out their review, you know, get really hands on with the product, run it through multiple tests and get a true hands on experience versus having the item for about 48 hours. At the end of the day, what I'm basically trying to get across is that because some of these big tech YouTubers are putting down the hardware of the M1 Max and M1 Ultra because they have already familiarized themselves with the M1 Pro, that shouldn't discourage you from canceling your own pre-order or deciding altogether not to go with that hardware, especially if this is gonna be your first introduction to these new Apple silicone chips. Watch these videos with an open mind and at the end of the day, you decide yourself if it's gonna work for you. And ladies and gentlemen, with that, we are at the conclusion of today's video. So I would like to say thank you so much for staying until the end. Again, I would just like to bring up that these are my own opinions. So if they do not line up with yours, you know, no harm, no foul, I totally get it. If you do find yourself enjoying these type of videos, you know, feel free to subscribe to my channel. I know I don't output the quickest video, but I do like to make a polished video. So do look forward to that. Beyond that, this is Mello, and as always, you all enjoy the rest of your day, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Take care, and enjoy.